with all the experiences that one has with the Lord, you, you think that you've arrived, you know. Um, I had a place of, of prayer, which was ba basically in, 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 a, in a forest area, uh, Paradise Valley, just outside of Queensborough. And uh, things were not going too well in the family and in, in general. And I don't particularly mean with my wife and my, my children but with the family in, in general and my dad's business and so forth. And I went to the place where I normally went to go and pray. And uh, it, it was almost a challenge to the Lord. And uh, the Lord said to me, he said, he said, why don't you sit on that concrete block that's behind you? And I, I, I remember, I didn't laugh out loud, but I had a little bit of a giggle and I said to him, I, I know there's no concrete block. He said, well, why don't you turn around and have a look? So I did. I looked and sure enough there was a concrete block. I'd been praying there for about three years, never seen it. So I sat down on the concrete block and lo and behold a, a blue diker uh, appeared and uh, started grazing the grass around about me and I clapped my hands and it totally ignored me. It just carried on eating the grass and doing its thing and then the next moment there were birds and I don't think there are any birds like that anywhere. I've ne never seen anything like it. I've always uh, liked birds, and I'm not referring to the ones in the bikinis now. I'm, I'm talking about the feathered birds, and uh, yeah, I, I, saw, I saw colours and, and, and birds that I've never seen or dreamt of in, in my life. There was an incredible display. They would come within inches of, of my face even, and that eventually stopped. The Lord said to me, he said, he says, why don't you look at that light that is behind you? Look, look up in the, in, in the western area. You know? And uh, I, I looked, this is about three, half past three in the afternoon. Well, I knew that it, it couldn't be the evening star because I'd been into astrology, I'd made my own telescope, ground my own lenses and all that sort of thing. So I, I knew it was, it was too early for, for the evening star. And uh, I remember quite clearly saying to the Lord, yeah, I, I know that's the reflection uh, of, the wind of, of one of the planes that are flying. He said, you think so? He said, well, just sit down. So I sat down and uh, I started praying in tongues, I suppose maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I don't know exactly how long. And the Lord said to me, he said, well, why don't you look at that aeroplane? You know, of which I did. And sure enough, the light was still there. And uh, I remember uh, uh, at that moment, I, I broke down and I, I, I wept. As a matter of fact, I, I fell on my knees and the, the Lord said quite clearly, don't challenge me. I am that I am. I will see you through. And it was on that note that I finally left and I drove home. Well, one would think, you know, that after experience like that, I mean, that, that's really a high, that you've arrived, you know. You're the big deal, you know. You're no big deal. He's the big deal, you know. He's Mr. Big. I found out he's Mr. Big. And uh, because of the pressures that had uh, come, I suppose, and I don't know why, why I particularly decided that uh, this was the end for me. I was, I was going to end my life. I was going to commit suicide. And I had a nine millimeter parabellum, and I put it into my vehicle. And, drove off and decided where I would actually do it and I was traveling on the road and I tuned my radio and that was before the the era of really digital radios in that respect so you, you tuned it in by hand and I remember listening to some classical music and uh, next minute it just changed and I heard this man's voice so I retuned and I remember thinking to myself as it's probably moved because I hit a bump in the road or something and it happened a second time, and uh, then it happened a third time. But on the third occasion, this man's voice somehow just struck a note, and I listened. And uh, these are the words that he declared. He said, you, you are in a vehicle, you're driving right now, and you're on your way to commit suicide. He said, I want you to understand that this is not a recording. This is a live broadcast, and the Lord has interrupted this sermon and he's told me to tell you that he has plans for your life 
in your latter days he will use you for his glory and it was on that note that I decided well okay fine you know uh, I'll throw the towel in and face the music or whatever was going to happen and just put it into the hands of the Lord I went back home and uh, I had in fact written a letter to my wife and thank the Lord that uh, she hadn't uh, read the letter so otherwise I think fear would have struck her heart and would have been most unfair so I was able to destroy the letter and uh, the following day I went to the local, local gun shop and I said to the guy would you like to buy the pistol and he said yeah sure I'll buy it so he bought it and, and all the bullets etc that I had and so that, that, that was it and I just saw the hand of God move and just how precious one is in, in his sight you know you, you think you have no worth but that is not true, irrespective of who you are and, and what your status is in life. He loves you and when He created you in the womb of your mother, He created you with love and with an anticipation that, that whatever He's put in you, you will pursue it for His glory.